All we ever want to do here at TGC is just deliver where others can't, where, where others won't. It's a very rare, special mid-tournament interview with, as we go to where, the leading wicket taker at the 2023 Cricket World Cup. Now, the only way we ask you guys to help us is by subscribing to the channel. Subscribe to the TGC YouTube channel so we can bring you more moments like this. I mean, who knows? This could be a shit show as well. Uh, I guess we're going we're gonna to find out. But um, last time we saw this guy, and you know who I'm talking about because you can actually see him, uh, and you also know who his name is by the you know the name of the actual um, episode. Yeah, um, he was on a three star motel bed with us uh, ahead of a World Cup game against New Zealand. Um, today he's in plusher surrounds. I think uh, he's in Durham Sala, looking wonderful and fleece uh, and a John Deere cap um, ahead of a World Cup game against New Zealand. It's a tremendous privilege to be welcomed and to welcome Adam Zampa to the great cricketer Zorba. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, always a pleasure to see you guys. Unfortunately, this time, not in between you, in bed. <laughs> that was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so it'll be um, 14 days ago, the nation, I don't know if you're aware, 14 days ago, the nation was arranging a royal commission into the performance of the national <laughs> side. Um, and now today, um, uh, ticker tape parades with chariots are being arranged. So do you think that says more about, uh, you know, the hyperactive nature of media and um, people online? Or have you guys actually turned something around? Yeah, I think the media obviously plays a role in that. But I've also come to realise in the last few weeks just how patriotic Australians are. Mm. Um, they just they love the country so much. They do basically anything for it. Um and I think that puts a lot of pressure on us to perform, and hence why the the Royal Commission was had. Um, so, what's what's your favourite part of the national anthem? <laughs> exactly uh, the end of it. <laughs> uh, no, nah, all um, all jokes aside, I, I love the national anthem. It's, um, love the lyrics. Love the way it makes me feel. It's great. Yeah. Oh. Um, because this was from Will Swanton in The Australian uh, on October 17. Um, this was him writing about uh, both you and Andrew McDonald not singing the national anthem in two specific games. Uh, no, so I think I saw him singing the last game. Mm. Are they not proud to be Australians on a World Cup stage? Oh. Are they not honoured to represent the great sporting nation? Are they not grateful for the canary yellow shirt and opportunities provided by cricket and country? Yep. If not, why are they out there mm. for their own personal glory? Perhaps the privilege should be handed to others. And he continues, wow. Mr. Speaker. It's just such an odd, meaningless, pointless, awkward, cringeworthy stance. Yep. Pompous posturing, surly and miserable, nothing powerful about it. Because, oh wait, yeah, because nobody has the faintest clue about their exact grievance. If they care about the anthems or Australia's shortcomings so much, they should tell us more about it. Push for change. Because without action, they don't really care at all. Adam, mm. and I will call you Adam. Why didn't you? Why didn't you pre-warn the nation uh, about the particular approach to the national anthem you took in two games yeah. of the many you've played for Australia? Yeah. Where was our pre-warning, and how do you feel about the nation? You piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> generally, generally, mostly in love with Australia. Yes. Yeah. First thing I have to say, though, is that the only Swanson that I listen to is Ron Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea who this Will Swanson is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Swanson. Um, well. Yeah. So. But, yeah, a lot of background story. Basically, everyone knows I've been complaining about it enough, but I've had back spasms. Did you know that? I've got – yeah, I've read about it all. Uh, you got that written down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had back spasms. And anyway – I may have um, taken a couple of Panadine Fort pre-game to try and get through, and I don't even know. If, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I don't have much recollection of the first fifteen overs of the game, let alone oh. um, the national anthem. So, yeah, it was surprising to see that article come out. I didn't even know though. I didn't sing the anthem. Um, but yeah, I guess people ask me why I didn't sing it the second time, and I basically just said because I'm extremely stubborn. <laughs> that was my guess. <laughs> so in the yeah, so like 
if I can press you on that, Zor, yeah, your like, follow up question, sort of journalistically. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you have the Southern Cross tattooed on you? No, um, uh, like you don't, you don't remember like part of the game. Like that's isn't that concerning? Should we should we be concerned about that? Well, yeah, I, I did. I dragged the dock over about fifteen hours in and said my back's starting to hurt. Yeah, I think the fort have worn off. And what happened in the first fifteen hours? And he said, "The only thing I can tell you, mate, is that you bowled like shit." <laughs> Australian cricket, it's good, it's alive. Yeah. We're going to win this thing. We're going to yeah. win this World Cup. Even the doctor's into you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what would you, you finish with in that no, game? No, no, cons- no, no concern, just a little bit less codeine next time. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you how I saw it, Zorb. Um, after losing the first two games against India and South Africa and then Sri Lanka were none for 125 and I was thinking – like this is going to be a long tournament, man. Like I think, I reckon we're done. I, I, I honestly thought like the boys look so cooked. Um, and then Dave Warner takes a good catch, doesn't he, off Pat Cummins? Uh, and before then, there was a couple of drop catches. I don't, I don't think you'd, you'd bowled that well, or you maybe not as well as what you wanted to. But like, what was, what was it like in the huddle <laughs> when Warner took that catch at Luck? Now everyone's run over. Was there like, was there some anger? Was there some anger in that huddle? Uh, I don't know if anger is the, the w- right way to describe it. It was like it was it was a strange feeling. I think we kind of just told ourselves to stay in the competition because we, we knew we were in a compromising position. If this game gets gets away from us, then you know three and zero with six games left is yeah, it's not it's not great. So mm. um, we kind of just stayed in it, um, and we know that with the team much like Lanka, if you get on top of them the game can change really easily. So there wasn't really like panic stations or anger. It was just, um, yeah, we needed to try and stay in the contest. Mm. But also did somebody say lift boys mm. or something like that? Or work hard. Work hard. Yeah. Was there any of that? Yeah, plenty of that. Plenty of that. <laughs> Stoin, 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 Stoin was the best. He came up to me and he could see I was in pain and he, I think he had a little bit of a niggle and he's like, Matt, just, let's just have a crack out. Let's just have a fucking go. Who cares if we you do your back even worse and I do my hamstring, rip it off the bone. We're going to go home fucking losers anyway. If we don't have a crack, so let's go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was that was probably like my turning point. I was like, yeah, fine. let's just have a crack. Let's go. Fucking hell. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I've always just wanted to ask this of like an international leg spinner, but like, I was like how are they coming out? <laughs> Better, better now after the doc had a crack at me yeah. after the fifteen over mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how are you feeling? How are you feeling generally? Because I think you were unwell before the Pakistan game. Is that right? So it's been it's been a been a rough trip for you. Don't remember half of it. Um, doctors getting into you. You've been you've been yeah. unwell. What was it a back, a neck, a headache? You swam into a wall. Oh yeah. Uh, they were calling you Lazarus, but you still got <laughs> up for it. Yeah. How are you now? I'm good. I'm on the mend. Um, yeah, I've had the back spasms. The spasms got worse due to a virus. Um, there was a flu floating around that I think I might have got, but I didn't want to tell anyone about it because then they'd be like, geez, this bloke again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's all it's all good on the mend. We've got one more game and then a week off up in beautiful Dharamsala. The air's fresh, a lot fresher than it was in Delhi. Um, yeah. So it's all looking good. Um, you've already been to – you started in Chennai, then Lucknow, Bangalore against Pakistan the other day. You're in Dharamshala now. Then you go to Ahmedabad, then Mumbai. Then you finish in Pune before hopefully a semi-final either Mumbai or Calcutta. Um, how how has that amount of travel been for like for the group and also yourself? The, the travel is one of the hardest things about being a, a white ball player. I mean, it's not like you can get to a certain place – set your hotel room up and feel like you're at home for a little bit. It's, it's tough. You open up the suitcase, live for a couple of days and then play a game. Usually, usually the games finish quite late. So you're in bed late. Um, yeah, you sleep. It's hard to manage sometimes. And then the travel days are, although like we're well looked after, it does get to you when you're traveling every three or four days. So it's one of the, 
physical challenges, especially during the World Cup. And yeah, our, our schedule's been quite tough. Um, but yeah, it's like four games left, semis. Um, so like we're, we're nearing towards the finish line. And I think, you know, considering our schedule and how tough it has been, the boys are, are hanging in there. Everyone's feeling, feeling pretty good. Uh, th- this also, might- we have five T20s after this uh, World Cup, which is great scheduling. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. That's going to be a great series. That's going to be good. Um, good warm up for the World Cup next year. Um, uh, uh, look, this is a. Bi- <laughs> what was that noise? Sorry, I heard a noise. That was Trent. That was, was Trent Bolton in the background. Was his, that was yeah. His son, yeah. Um, uh, look, this is a trivial question. I just wanted to pick you up on like how you actually travel and use your hotel and stuff like that. There's, uh, like cricket attracts people who are, have got attention to detail and a lot of people who listen to the show may travel and go in and out of hotels and stuff. Like what what is your process if you're in a hotel for like a day or two? When you get there with your suitcase, are you actually unpacking? Are you are you keeping your, your clothes folded? Are you putting them away in the, um, the spaces that are afforded to you? If they are afforded at all, are they on the ground? Is it a mess and you just go in and out? Like... Do you have the same process? Just run us through that. Process is very important to me. Um, I'm one of the the neater kind of guys. I think I always get to my hotel room. I'm thinking about the next day, so I will set up all of my coffee stuff. Yes. That'll be the first thing. Um, Yeah, what else? Get the apple cider vinegar out ready for the morning, have a little shot of that. Get the bath salts ready. Um, yeah, everything's quite neat and tidy. I get the the face creams all set up in the bathroom. So I'm I'm ready for the next morning to to sort my shit out, basically, because I know it's there's going to be shit that needs sorting. Exactly. Can I just follow up on coffee? Please. Oh, I want you to. There was a piece of sort of mandated ICC content that landed a week or two ago concern with with players in Australian one day like canary one day kit answering questions and um, on this occasion the question um, pertained to your coffee I don't know if you saw it but um, a number of players were asked to rate your coffee out of 10 and um, the ma- the large majority rated it somewhere between eight and ten I think Stoin even um, you know, explained what his aesthetic preferences are with coffee, but but also ultimately, you know, gave you a very high ranking. And then it went to Steve Smith, who sort of looked vacantly down the camera and said, six. <laughs> <laughs> six out of ten. As, as, though, as, as though he was surprised by the, mm. the, the, the prospect that you might make good coffee. Uh, I don't want to cause any rifts, rifts like a... Like, you know, Dave Warner's already doing that with Maxi on Twitter. So, um, yeah, any – how did that feel, uh, you know, any response? <laughs> I did I did see the video. Um, <coughs> Smitty's never had one of my coffees. Mm, yeah, so. So I, I don't know if I need to judge him harshly on the judgment of my coffee or just – be like, well, the camera's in your face and you've got to say something because most of the boys who also haven't had any of my coffee gave it 10. Um, I don't know if it was because I've invested in his oat milk and Mm. there's no mention of the oat milk in my coffee because I don't use the oat milk in my coffee. So this is business kind of war war gaming. Yeah, I don't don't know. I don't know where it's come from. I was a bit disappointed to to hear about it. Um, Maybe the coffee shops in New York are better better than the ones in Byron Bay. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it's come from, but... I haven't, I haven't spoken a word to him since. He may well have just been suggesting where Travis Hedgewood bat in the order. Six. Um, that, that, might, that might have been what he was he saying. <laughs> that might have been what was happening. Zorb, uh, it's Dave Warner's birthday today, 37 today. Are the boys going to put on a light show for him? <laughs> As he Is loves he 37? it. 37. 37, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, today. Wow. Um, had no idea it was his birthday. And have no idea what the boys will be doing. Yeah, haven't hasn't even come on my radar. Yeah, um, hey, might show potentially. Yeah, yeah. Oh, honestly, no idea. 
Yeah. Huh? Um, cake, cake smash usually. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah they yeah, like yeah. that, don't they? Don't they? Um, yeah, I, they love the cake smash. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. The cake just goes in their face. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zorb, I saw you at the Taj Mahal with the family the other day. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you've been to the Taj before. You've obviously been spent a lot of time in India over the course of your career, but uh, mate, what what a place! Mm. What a place! The Taj is fucking so good, isn't it? Yeah, so good. Great experience. Um, First time? Yeah, one of the first time. Yeah. Um, I thought it'd be a nice little family trip with the little fellow. I know that he will have absolutely no idea that he's ever been, but it'd be good to get a photo with him. Yeah. Um, absolute mayhem though, there, though, like trying to get one of the electric golf carts to the front of the gate at 5.45 a.m. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of rude tourists, which... It kind of I don't like, but it also gets me up and about because I can get a little bit chirpy, which I did. <laughs> um, holding holding my baby, trying to get on the get to the front of the line. I got to the front of the line, and then golf cart comes, and then about fifty tourists run straight past me, elbow me to get to get onto the golf cart. So I just was like, no, nah, not having this. Mm. I haven't had my morning coffee yet. Mm. Got my little fella in my arms. Just want to go see the Taj Mahal before the crowd gets there. So I've just gone up to all of them while I'm holding him and go, going, grow the f- up, grow the f- up, grow the f- up. And they're all like, whoa, what's this guy? Yeah. He needs his morning coffee, the big fella. But, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> that kind of stuff gets me up and about. Yeah, it's good. Get a bit chirpy, 6 a.m. in the morning. Harriet says, Adam, what are you doing? And I go, you know me. You've done it for 10 years. You know this is what I'm about. So leave me alone. Let me do my thing. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, I know that uh, you're talking about how you, you know, the things you need to get up and about, um, you know, for you being rude tourists and that kind of thing. Like yeah. we, we've realized that over the last couple of years that the boys need golf to get up and about. Yeah. Uh, that's usually the, the measure of how the team's going, how they're going with their sticks. So I just wanted to know, like, is it how are you guys managing that? Is it a golf simulator? Are, are there ample tee times? Uh, are we happy with where golf is? You know how how the the golfing is given its important place in the happiness of international cricket teams. There's a there's a golf WhatsApp group which I'm not involved with at all. Um, you guys know I'm not a golfer. So I actually call golf flog people. You know, mm, yeah, golf yeah. backwards flog. So anagram. Yeah, put flog and call the boys floggers. It's just <laughs> silly joke. Come on. Um, but there has been a f- bit of opportunity for golf. I think we've got a week off after this game in Durham Zala, yeah. and they've got the Jesse Ryder Cup, I believe they've called it. <laughs> <laughs> they're, in, they're in teams of two. They've got like three or four days of golf, different types of golf. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a few golfers, floggers, clashing at the moment. Yeah. Um, about T-shirts and where they're getting them manufactured and what they're calling the Jesse Ryder Cup. and um, Yeah. I, I, my suggestion was to call it Two Girls, One Jesse. <laughs> um, but that didn't get put through to the group. Um, I'm buying the shit out of that T-shirt, yeah, though. Yeah. Can we, can we make that together? Exactly. <laughs> Would have killed it with merch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one player's tried to get it. I know one player's tried to get uh, like a sponsor organized for the event, and the boys were like, Can we just make it Kingfisher? We don't want Callaway involved. We just want yeah. it to be a Kingfisher sponsored event. So I think there's a bit of a few heads clashing around that as well. Um, but yeah, interesting to see how the Jesse Ryder Cup goes for them. Um, well, one of the one of the keen golfers, keen floggers of the group. Glenn Maxwell just put on an absolute display, 40 ball, 40 rock, 100. And as the camera flashed to the dressing room, there was Adam Zampa standing on a chair. Love the support <clears> for the boys. Just could not believe what he'd just seen. You mm. know, just, uh, you know, Sean Abbott obviously knew how excited you were for Glenn, mm. came over and, and yeah. celebrated. You what, celebrated what, together. Yeah, what, what, do you, what do you remember from that moment when Glenn Maxwell went to his 100 of 40 balls? Sean Abbott was inside in the change rooms with me and the, is it Delita? Mm. He had 87 off nine overs. 
And Sean goes, your, your record is a chance here. And I was like, nah, 28, 27. I don't, I don't think that's happening. And then I was like, actually, I think I was on 87 after nine overs. So maybe we're, we're a sniff. And then the first few overs, first few balls of the over went to the part, uh, went to the boundary. And I was like, yeah, I think we're on, we're on here. Um, <laughs> gets closer and closer. It happens. And I think the same ball that the record got taken away from me, he got his hundred. So I like gave it the big ones as you saw. Boys got around me. Everyone's standing up outside, clapping, getting around Maxi. And then, the best part of it was I, everyone sat down. I ran outside and said, hey, Maxie just got his 100, everyone. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, easy, easy, easy gag, but yeah. um, horrible, horrible feeling mm. to, to be, yeah. Going around the park like that, so a bit of sympathy towards uh, Delita. But um, yeah, nice world record that I held for about four weeks. Yeah. Um, got straight on the blower to, to Mickey Lewis after the game and got around each other for, for a few minutes, which was good. Yeah. How does it? How does a sort of an Adam Zamper and a Mick Lewis get around each other? Yeah. Uh, what does that look like? Um. The, the texts with him say, welcome to the club, mate. <laughs> I said, thanks. And my next message was, congrats. And then he said, how good. <laughs> <laughs> He's my best mate. So I did say a few minutes, but it was more like a few seconds. <laughs> just a couple of Australian men just, right. just, just chinwagging. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great chat with yeah. uh, Mick today. How are you? <laughs> Uh, Who's the best man of our wedding? He's, he's my best man. <laughs> uh, yeah. What about, um, I mean, just, just looking at the World Cup, Zorby, the actual cricket, uh, I mean, it, it looks like India in daylight at the moment. They, uh, mm. I know you, you'll just be obliged to, to agree that they're a good site. Uh, you know, what... what can can you see any way teams can make inroads into them? Because in every phase of the game, they just look like they're on absolute fire at the moment. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 India, and then South Africa are playing probably the second best cricket. New Zealand are playing well. Um, we're kind of getting some momentum now, but. Yeah, I mean, World Cups are interesting because it kind of you just got to make it happen when it, when it counts. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if whoever does play in there in the semis, how they go about it. Um, put a bit, a bit more pressure on it. Um, it'll be also inter- interesting to see if they do lose in the semi, how they try and make it a three game series. Um, yeah. As well. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Because it's. <laughs> India's World Cup, so I'm sure that will, will happen yeah. if it gets to that stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of making inroads, they're a good team. They've got yeah all bases covered, so it'll be going to be tough to beat them. You've just guaranteed yourself food poisoning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for the next three <laughs> weeks, he's already got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm immune to everything now. You can't get me. <laughs> I just look, just looking mm. ahead to uh, to New Zealand. Zorby, uh, I mean, from our perspective, the rhythms feel good for Australia, who've just caught a little bit of fire lately to just uh, completely disrespect our um, cousins. Uh, mm. But um, how, how, how are you seeing the fixture? Good team, you know, Conway, yeah. uh, all those guys. <laughs> um, yeah, New Zealand. Playing good cricket, they always play really good cricket in the World Cup. So, yeah, look, we have good battles against them. Um, we've played really good cricket against them in the last couple of years, particularly in ODI cricket. So, um, yeah, important for us to keep the momentum. Interesting to see what the Darn Southern wicket looks like. Um, yeah, it'd be a good battle. Do you, do you know? Do you know if uh, like if Hetty will be coming back for this game? 
no idea. Mm. Absolutely no idea. I thought he was playing last game. So that's how much I know. And if you did know, would you tell us? Mm. Yeah, mm. I think so. Okay. Just checking. Off, off the record, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah when, we, when, we lo- when we log off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll tell cool. you what I'll, I'll tell you what I know in about five minutes. <laughs> Sick. Oh, good. Well, audience enjoy will enjoy hearing that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. oh, I mean, while, while we're on it as well, just we don't get, we don't talk a lot about uh, Dan Vittori, who's been ensconced in the Australian uh, setup for yeah. like a couple of years now. Uh, I mean, you know, there's there's not that many spinners in the Australian camp at the moment uh, for India, but um, uh, you got I mean, how, like spinners do kind of. Tend to hang out a little bit. Like, are you, do you, are you sort of kindred spirits with uh, with Vittori? What's he What's he offering you on and off the field? Yeah, Dan and I are very close. Um, he's actually the bowling coach in general. Um, but yeah, we obviously have that little spin bowling connection. He's a uh, he's a mad flogger, though. Right. Mm. Loves to flog. Um, so he's yeah he's. I don't have that connection with him, which gets lost a little bit in translation. Um, but yeah, Dan, Dan's a good man. Doesn't sing the Australian national anthem. Which <laughs> uh-huh. is a bit weird. Wow. What a piece um, of shit. It's funny. It's funny. They singled Andrew McDonald out when he wasn't singing it either. Mm. Um, so yeah, Dan's a good man. Just no good at the anthem. Um, who, I mean, who in the New Zealand side, uh, Will you be targeting? I mean, obviously they have the big dogs like, uh, like you know, Devin Conway, um, but also also Ratchan Ravindra uh, has been scoring a lot of runs now. Um, Interesting I, I think, name. Yeah, at Ratchan, uh, his name is a amalgam of um, I can't know, I don't know who, but uh, he's an yeah. Uh, Sarah how Jessica I, Parker. How did I know this was? How did I, how did I know this was going to come up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but you know, he's he's uh, playing very well. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's playing really well, uh, Ratchin. Um, yeah, <laughs> really good. Is it feels like he's a combination cricketer, really, like a combination of a few guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, as you look at him, you go, he's got parts of this of his game, but right. someone, and then parts of this of his game, but someone else. Yeah. Um, and then he even. The back end gives it the left arm also. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there's a bit there. Yeah, he looks like a good cricketer. Mm. Very good. Uh, finally, from me, Zorby, mm. when you guys won the T20 World Cup uh, in 2021, you spoke of how you'd kept the receipts mm. of wide-ranging criticism, you know, from journos about those who didn't think you could do it. Now, like, to be fair, like, you's uh, lost, like, 25 games, it seemed, like, ahead of this World <laughs> Cup. And... You know, personally, I was like, oh, it's not looking good. So is that a receipt you've kept? Uh, and how will you sort of, if you guys go all the way, which you might, um, like how will you sort of cash that in? Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's written in the black book. And if if we do if we do get to help hold up the trophy, I'll be singing the team song and you, you guys will be called out. <laughs> One hundred percent. Usually, it's former cricketers, but it's it's. We play, yeah, yeah, former cricketers, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're in that, yeah, you're in that bracket, so <laughs> you'll be called out. Yeah. <laughs> well, probably for the driest inf- interview that we've ever conducted. Thank you very much, uh, Adam Zampa. Wishing you all the best for the rest of the the tournament there, and uh, health and happiness to you and your, your family and and the team, mates. Thanks, guys. Subscribe. Ha, 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 ha.